Good morning. Welcome to Coffee Break with Pray Center. Thank you for joining me this morning, and I hope that you've had a wonderful morning so far, wherever you are. Um, let's open up with the word of prayer, um, and then we'll get right into our lesson. That's a good lesson, I think, today. Father God, we just want to thank you for this day. We thank you for your love and your kindness and your tender mercies. God, we thank you for just being um, with us this morning. Thank you for carrying us through the day so far, oh God. We ask that you be with us this morning. Be it with this lesson that we are going to look at on this morning. God, open up our heart and our minds to understand what you have for us today and then help us apply it to our lives, oh God. Don't just let us just go through the lesson and just read it, but God, help us to apply it so that we may grow in you, get closer to you, um, and be better Christians in this world today. God, I ask a special blessing on my sisters that are joining me on this morning. Bless them in a special way, oh God. Prosper their ways, encourage their hearts, and keep them, God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for all that you have done in our lives, all that you are currently doing, and everything that you're going to do in our lives. We bless you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, ladies, so grab everything that you need. Grab your um, journals. Grab your Bibles. Uh, and we're going to get, because I have some scriptures for you that I want you to write down in your journals today. So grab everything that you need and let's get started. Grab your books if you have them. If you have not ordered your High Heels and High Places um book that we are doing this series, go ahead and make sure you go on the website, praisecenterkojic.org, and order your book. There's still time. We still have many chapters to get through, so you're not too late to order that book. And you can order any of the previous series um, books that we've had, too. They're still there for you to order because I think that they're great um, tools to have in your library. You might need to refer back to them every once in a while. And I think that um, you would want to have those. Today in our series, High Heels and High Places, um, we are, we're going to take a look at an interesting, uh, uh, in, an interesting look at fighting temptation. That's what we're going to be doing today. So, um, those of you that are joining me here this morning, we have scriptures here on the uh, listed out for you. But as we go through, I would like for those of you that are even even those of you that are joining us here, if you can write them down in your journals so that you can make sure because those papers seem like they disappear. But those of you joining us via Ustream, um, make sure you write these scriptures down because this particular lesson I think we all need um, and we're going to need the word to back it up. Okay, so today in chapter 11, that's where we are in chapter 11 of High Hills and High Places. Um, chapter 11, the title is Scratching Where It Itches with Athlete's Foot. I know it sounds disgusting. I know it sounds gross, but go with me on this for one, just, just for a minute, okay? Go with me with this one. Uh, I have a question for you. I have a question for you. Have you ever had or have or known of a disease or an issue that just wouldn't go away like a physical on your body a, a disease or a physical issue that you've had or known of someone um, that just would not go away it it just no matter what happened no matter what you did it just not would not go away Think about that for a second. I know it's kind of weird. You know, issues like athlete's foot um, can be can be controlled, but never is not can't be quite cured in a sense. Um, it's caused by a fungus. It flares up on occasion at any time until you know till death. But until it, it just flares up and it can occur at any time. Herpes, I know, it sounds, uh, I know, I'm getting weird, but herpes, um, the, the common one maybe that, let's think about this one, um, cold sores or fever blisters, when those, those things affect other parts of your body, okay, um, they can be contagious even when they're dormant, right? Think, just think about that for a second. 
Another one that's very common that may have touched some of us in family or actual um, individuals ourselves, um, asthma. Asthma. An attack um, is it's an allergic is an allergic reaction to various and it has various triggering agents, right? People can have asthma attacks for different reasons, different things um, can trigger it. It may go on for years. I mean, you may go for years without having an attack, but the danger is always there, right? The danger is always there. There is one disease or issue that I think we all share. <laughs> we all share. And that's temptation to sin. It can be very fatal. Uh, it pollutes both physically and spiritually. And we are exposed to it every day. We're exposed to it daily. Temptation to sin. Um, so just think about, I mean, I mean, there are many other things I'm sure that you've probably come across or issues that you probably had that just will not go away. Like there's no cure or there's no, and I, when I say cured, you can't completely avoid it. You can't completely, it never really leaves. Yes, you can satisfy it, but it never, or temporary relief, but it never really leaves. As I was doing this study, I began to think of or liking how we react to or respond to the temptation of sin, like how we react or see, and I'm going to use athletes, but because that's what our, our lesson, our title is on today, okay? I think we respond or are liking it to how we respond to temptation, to how we respond to athletes, let me explain that. Okay, so just keep going with me here. Keep going with me. Don't don't get distracted. <laughs> so athlete's foot. See your toes begin to itch and you feel something burning and and you you burning in your shoes. You begin to scratch, but it doesn't help. Soon you notice blisters. The skin between your toes begin to crack and the soles of your feet start to peel and, and then you start applying lotion, but nothing seems to help. Temptation. Whether it's doing drugs, have sex, or something else you think you know or know you should not be doing, starts as a passing thought. Starts at the passing thought, and then, then it gains some momentum and lures you into action, which leads you to shame, deceit, and more sin. Keep going with me here, okay? Keep keep going with me here. Now, treatment for athlete's foot is usually simple, okay? The doctor, you may go to the doctor if you you really don't know what it is. You may go to the doctor, and the doctor may um. Apply some powder. Have you apply some some powder that contains a medicine or a cream that kills the fungus, right? If it's very severe, the doctor may prescribe an oral um, antifungal pill for you. Many remedies can be purchased over the counter. You don't even have to go to the doctor per se to get a prescription or to even get a diagnosis. Sometimes you know it's athlete's foot. You can go to the CVS, the drugstore, and actually buy remedies for treatment. But note this. Even if your symptoms improve or stop shortly after using these antifungal um, medications, these meds, it's important to know that reinfection is common and it needs to be fully treated each time the symptoms develop okay athletes but you know that you, you tend to and well you know a lot of people think that only athletes get athletes but that's not the case <laughs> it's 
you can get um, we often when, when I was going to college that was like one of the big things um, you make sure you had your shower shoes and uh, you know clean towels and different things like that because you didn't want to uh, walk barefoot in a the public uh, shower that you shared with your dorm mates um, you didn't want because of the different bacteria different things the funguses that were you know in the shower not to say that it wasn't clean or different things like that but it wasn't clean like mama's cleaning right um, so you get that from moist towels um, from the moisture in your shoes things like that how you get athletes but so when it comes you have to treat it one treatment for athlete's foot, which is not recommended, is scratching. Athlete's foot itches. It really does itch. <laughs> okay? Scratching may feel good, but it doesn't bring relief. Hmm. The irritation of the skin causes it to continually want more scratching. No matter how much you scratch or give into it, the more it wants, the more you scratch, the more you want the scratching to happen because it's like, okay, that feels good, that feels good, but it wants more. The harder you scratch, the deeper you drive it into your flesh, causing it to itch even more. A cycle that could end in a real bloody mess. If you do it for too long. Sorry if I'm grossing you out. I'm going somewhere with this here. Now, treatment for fighting temptation is just as simple. It's just as simple. And carrying athlete's foot or treating athlete's foot is simple. And fighting temptation is just as simple. But how do you do that? How, how, how can you say that fighting temptation is simple? We just have to choose to do it <laughs> and not scratch or give in to it. Okay? I won't go into um, the different, the, into the ways of temptation, you know, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life, three fundamental principles that summarize um, any temptation we face in our daily lives. Okay, I won't go deep into that. But what I want us to understand today is that every Christian, every believer, is faith, faced with some kind of temptation. Every believer, every Christian is faced with some kind of temptation. Even Jesus was tempted, right? So write down in your in your journals because I want you to go back and read these scriptures too, and I'm going to give you quite a few of them. Matthew four, chapter one, chapter four, verses one through eleven. Matthew four, verses one through eleven. I'm not going to read that, but even Jesus was tempted there, All right? In Hebrews chapter four, verse fifteen, it says. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the filling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted, like as we are, yet without sin. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15. Every Christian is faced with some type of temptation. Every believer. Okay, this is no, no, not new news. Just a reminder. <laughs> Even Paul struggled or, you know, with, with things, with issues. Write down Romans chapter 7, verses 21 through 25. Romans chapter 7, verses 21 through 25. Reason in New Living Translation, it says, It seems to be a fact of life that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. I love God's law with all my heart. But there is another law that work within me, at work within me, 
that is at war with my mind. This law wins the fight and makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. Remember those secret sins we used to talk about? Oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin? Thank God. The answer is, G it, the answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. Every Christian, every Christian is faced with some kind of temptation. It's so easy to fall or give in to temptation because there is a temporary pleasure in it. Just like scratching that athlete's foot or scratching an itch, period. There's a temporary relief. There's a temporary pleasure in it. Write down Hebrews. Chapter 11, verse 25. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 25. It says, choosing rather to suffer affliction. This is, um, was it Moses? Uh, affliction with the people of God than to then enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. He chose to share the oppression of God's people instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasures of sin. Sin, you know, and the enemy knows what sin is pleasurable to you because not all sin is pleasurable to you. There are some things you just don't find pleasure in indulging in. There are some things you just, you know, does not phase you. There are some things that you have been delivered from, right? That you have been saved from, freed of, that the enemy comes and puts right back into your, your pathway for you to remember, <laughs> think back, think back when, and find, oh yeah, I remember when I did that. Oh man, that was. Good, and it could be anything that was not pleasing to God that you know was not right for you, was not in the will of God, it was not in your God plan, and you were turned from that, saved from that. But the enemy wants you to fall back, fall out of grace with God. He wants you to go back to that, so he, you know, entices you with that. And sometimes it's really easy. If we don't stop and think about it, it's really easy to fall or give in to the temptation because of the temporary pleasure in it. I want us to think about different treatment, a treatment for overcoming temptation. Now remember, temptation of sin Temptation to sin is, is something that, it's a disease, I call it a disease. It's a disease that will never go away from us, but we don't have to be infected with it, if that makes sense. Okay? We can fight it off. We can, um, and even if we're kind of battling with it, you know, we're indulging in it. We can overcome it. We don't have to stay there continuously scratching and digging deeper into it. Because guarantee the more you dig into sin, the more you scratch sin, the more you play with it, mess with it, the deeper you go into it, the harder it is to come out of it, to overcome it. Treatment for overcoming temptation. Turn to with me to James chapter 1 verse 15. James chapter 1 verse 15. It says, Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Remember, I told you, temptation of, to sin is very deadly. It's very fatal. 
And so because we don't want to really entertain the thought, we should turn it over to Jesus. We should turn that temptation over to Jesus. And, and you might say, well, you know, the devil is cunning and he knows our weaknesses. No, he just knows. He doesn't necessarily know that you're weak in that area. He just wants to see if you'll fall for that thing again. He doesn't know where you're going to fall for it or not. If he knew that he, and if he, or if he knew that you were strong enough not to fall for that, you know, he, that was not really that smart. If you really think about it. He entices you, he, he throws things in your face, but then he stands, you know, he takes the, 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 what I want to say, he risks the opportunity of being rebuked. You think if the devil knew he was going to be rebuked, cast out, bound up, that he would tempt you with certain things? No. So therefore, we, you got to understand, he, doesn't, he really doesn't know your weaknesses. He just tries different things to see if they'll work. Right? So don't, don't fall for, oh, he's so powerful. He just, he's so knowing. No, he's not. He just tries different things. And sometimes he looks out. Right? Because that's what it is. He's, he's, he's trying to, that all he, all he knows is luck. <laughs> There's no grace or anything. He just knows luck. Right? So turn that temptation over to Jesus. Don't get discouraged when temptation comes. Because it will come. But choose to squash it. While it is still a thought. Don't allow this thing to fester and then, you know, grow in your mind, right? Because it starts as a thought. It starts as a thought. Don't allow that thought to fester. Like, can, like you just ponder on it and you dwell on it. Because then it turns, it, it, it brings forth sin. It, it goes right into, it births sinful actions, and when sinful action is allowed to grow, and when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. Choose to squash it while it is still a thought. Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. It says the temptation in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. Right? When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. He'll show you a way to escape. So that you'll be able to bear it. So turn that temptation over to Christ. Don't sit there and, and, and try to figure it out yourself. Turn it over to Christ. Go with me to James chapter 4 verse 7. This may be from, very familiar for some, but I still want you to write it. Because sometimes we need to, to read these scriptures, go back and, 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 and meditate on these scriptures to know that God is for us. He doesn't want us to fall. He doesn't want us to give in. He doesn't want us to scratch. He doesn't. Okay? James chapter 4, verse 7. It says, so submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. First thing you have to do is submit yourself. To God. Humble yourself before God. Sometimes we, we lift, leave off that, that little part before the comma. <laughs> we leave off that part because we know resist the devil and he will flee from you. We know that. But there is something, a contention that we have to do. We have to turn ourselves over to, to Christ. We have to God. We have to submit ourselves. We have to humble ourselves to God. 
That's where we find our strength, our energy, our, our direction to resist the devil. See, when we're focused on God, we're not focused on the issue. We're not focused on the devil. We're not focused on the sin. Humble yourselves before God, right? Then resi re just resist the devil. Don't dwell on him. Don't entertain him. Don't. And then he'll flee from you. When you ignore people, you just can't. When you, when you ignore people, you know, they're talking to you. Have you ever really stopped and ignored someone, you know, talking to you? And what do they do? After a while, if you ignore them long enough, they'll turn away from you. They'll go away. They might go away mad. You know, they might go away still talking and grumbling and complaining, but they'll go away. You need to do that to the devil. Just let him talk. Just let him just let him go at you. Just you know what? I'm just gonna ignore you. I'm not gonna even dwell on you. I'm not gonna even focus on you. I'm gonna focus on God. And he'll have to try something else. He's not gonna get tired of it, but he'll try something else. But just the next time he comes. Instead of entertaining a tempting, a tempting thought. Hmm. Tongue is getting tired today. Hand it over to Jesus and make the choice to refocus your mind for Christ. Okay? Don't give in to the thought. Don't scratch. Okay? Next treatment, or I think it's a treatment of overcoming temptation, is to equip yourself. Right? Get prepared. Turn with me to Ephesians. Let's see, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 11 through 17. Ephesians 6. This also may be very familiar to you. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11 through 17. And it says, Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You know all those strategies that the devil comes up with? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day and having in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Hmm. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Equip yourself. Get prepared. The first statement, one of the first statements I said is every Christian is faced with some kind of temptation. So get yourself prepared. Don't just say, okay, I know Christ and he is my savior and I just believe in him and I'm done. There are some things you got to do. You know, you got to you got to get yourself covered. You got to you got to put some things into your life. You especially 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 if you want to you know, really defeat the enemy in this world, you got you have to get into your word. You got to know your word. That's about the only thing that's going to take this devil down, you know, that that's a one two punch. That's what the, that's what the devil's going to have to take. That's what you have to give. Is the word all of this? You, got, you 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 have to suit up, get get yourself, equip yourself with everything. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take on, so that you can resist the enemy in the time of evils. This is what we need. We have to resist him. Let's read Psalm one nineteen and eleven. Psalm one nineteen. And 11 
And it says, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. We have to know, we have to. And I think we have been talking about the word, knowing the scripture, getting into the Bible, getting into the word of God. It's, it's really the, the main ingredient. It's really the main, the foundation. It's whatever you, you, you come up with. It's the main thing that you need in order to, to go to the places that you're trying to get to successfully with God. The word is the only thing that's going to get you through this, through, through, through the, the, the things that are going to start coming your way. No, the devil does not want to see you in high places. He doesn't. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get ahead of myself. So let me back up. Okay, well, let me get back to that. I'll get back to that. But you have to equip yourself with the word. It keeps you. It keeps you. The word keeps you. What does it keep you for? From sinning. It keeps you. It, it keeps you in a place that you can resist the enemy, the devil. Okay? Remember, Jesus used the word of God uh, to attack and overcome temptation. Did he not when he was in the wilderness? So we need to, to immerse ourselves in the word of God. Even more. <laughs> we don't quite have the power that Christ had. We need to immerse ourselves into the word of God just so that we can use it to fight the enemy. Okay, equip yourselves. And the third thing that I have here is a treatment for overcoming temptation. And I hope I'm not going too fast for you to get these down. The third one is don't, don't go at it all alone. Don't go at it alone. Depend on God. Yeah, you may think you're strong. I am so strong. I, you know, I've been saved for 30 years. Okay. <laughs> I know the enemy's game. I know the enemy's tricks. Don't go at it alone. Depend on God. Definitely. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians. What is it? Chapter, and we looked at it um, Chapter 10, 13, but let's read 12 and 13. First Corinthians chapter 10, verses 12 and 13. I'm going to read the New Living Translation this time. Okay, it says, if you think you are standing strong, be careful not to fall. The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful, and he will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. Don't go at it alone. Depend on God. He knows how much you can, you can bear, right? He knows when, okay, that's enough. Enough is enough. That's it. <laughs> he knows all of that. He knows what, what you can, he knows what you need in order to endure, to get through it. Write down Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus. The champion who initiates and perfects our faith. 
because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Keep your eyes focused on Christ. Okay? <laughs> Throw off every weight. Throw off everything that's holding you back. Focus on Christ. Don't go at it alone. Because, you know, he, why do something alone? When, when you're out, let's see, when you, when you are, I'm going to say when you're in a fight, that's not good. <laughs> when you're out trying to do some landscaping, okay, you want, you want your outside yard to, you know, look a certain way. There are, yes, there are all these do-it-yourself techniques and stuff like that. So you try to get out there and you're trying to do it on your own. And you know good and well you don't know a thing of what you do. You don't know what you are doing. Wouldn't it be beneficial if you could afford it or even if you knew someone close enough to you that you could ask someone to come and help you or hire someone to come that knows what they're doing to get the job done? They've already experienced it, how to do it. They've, they've gone through the, 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 the toil of learning how to do it. They've experienced the pros and cons of it before. They know technique. <laughs> they know, wouldn't it be best to go to someone, call on someone that knows what they're doing, that has experienced this before? That's with anything. Why is it, the same should go with our, our, our spiritual man, or, or when we are actually fighting temptation. Who better to call on than the one that has actually gone through it, that we can call on. We can call on him at any time. He's readily available. He's gone through exactly what we, have, what we are attempting to try to do on our own. I think there's some kind of phrase or something that, catchphrase uh, like better in numbers or I know it's a better together but it like when you have numbers you, you're better in numbers you know when you have more support I don't think I just want any any support though I just don't I don't think I want a whole bunch of people that don't know what they're doing haven't experienced anything you know that's a little naive and a little airheadish I guess I want someone there that knows how to how to back me up, how to push me forward, how to push me out of the way, how to, you know, understand what the devil is doing. Okay, don't don't fall for this. Here, you know, you need strength to come on, he's gonna throw something at you. Here, I'm, I'm gonna give you this kind of strength because you're gonna need this. I don't want to take you out of it because I want you to experience it, but I want you to live through it. That's the kind of support that I want. It only Christ can give you that support. Just think about that for a second. Okay? Don't go at it alone. Don't fight temptation alone. Depend on God. Go to God, seek God, and ask God for help. Our, our, our author here, she wrote something. It says, the enemy would love to see you weighted down and tangled up in a sinful thought life. A judgmental spirit, an immoral act, a self-centered existence, or a gajillion other sins, but not Jesus. He wants you to be light as a feather. He wants you to be free. So stay free by keeping your eyes on him. Don't let the sin, sin nab you and ensnare you, right? Keep your eyes on him as you run this race. Christ is the only one that can keep you free. Free from being weighted down. Free from, he doesn't want you. Yes, you're going to have to experience some temptation. And yes, you're going to, you, you, you have to learn from it. It gives you strength. Every temptation you think about, it gives you strength. Okay, but you don't have to dwell on it. You don't have to fall for it. Strength comes with 
warding it off, um, resisting it. Don't scratch. That's all I keep coming up with. Don't scratch. Don't fall for it. Don't, don't give in to it. The only way that you can keep yourself um, in a place where you're strong enough is you have to keep your eyes on Christ. You can't do it alone. You have to get into the word. You can't do it alone. <laughs> right? You have to really turn the temptation over to, to Christ. You cannot do it alone. I really hope I'm making sense here with you all because I don't want us to, we are, as we are going through, and you, you really see it, have seen, might have seen it quite a bit, the, the tricks of the enemy as we have been going through this fasting period, um, this time of consecration. And although we're in the last few um, days or the few weeks of it, the enemy, like I told you, he's not that smart, but the enemy will try a lot of different things, okay, um, to get you sidetracked, to say, well, you know, I've done this, it's been long enough, it's been, what, 28, 29, 30 days, so I'm good, I should be good with God, I don't need to go the whole 40, he'll try, he'll throw things at you. To, to make you feel defeated. He'll throw things at you, uh, put things right in your path. So you trip you up. But you have to know that they're coming. And when you know that it's co they're coming, you can begin to equip yourself. You can begin to build yourself up. Equip yourself with some, some scripture. I, I, I think that's the best, <laughs> the best tool, the best equipment, is to equip yourself with some scripture. The enemy does not like scripture. He does not like the Bible. He does not like the word of God. Because it's true. It's, it's, it's real. It's powerful. Okay? Equip yourself. Get prepared. Learning how to overcome temptation. Temptation is a very, is, is very important for every Christian. We, you know, we can quote this, that scripture, resist the devil and he will flee. Resist the devil and he will flee. But if we don't know that we need to go to God first, we need to submit ourselves to God. If we don't put that tidbit in there, then telling ourselves resist the devil and he will flee means we're doing it on our own. We totally excluded God out of it. It's very important that each one of us understand that the only way we can overcome, endure, not give in to temptation is with Christ. It's very important for us to understand that. We can't exclude him out of it. If we want to, if we want to get through this race, if we want to get to the finish line, the only way we can get through it, because the devil is there to trip us up, the only way we can get through him, you know, hurdle over him, is if we know and we, we put Christ in it. We all must learn how to depend on God. For the strength to stand strong. I started saying earlier, the devil, Satan, that enemy, he knows that you are endeavoring to go higher, to higher places. He knows. He knows that, um, man, can you imagine if, if, I don't know, the government was full of just Bible believing, total God fearing people. If, you know, that's like in a real big dream world, yes. But if that was the case, if if there was nothing, if every day, you know, we was able to go to or you were able to go to work and pull out your Bible and, you know, get your work done, of course, but you know, then you have free time, you know, talk about the word of God to someone, pray with someone that's going through, you know, th different little things. C can you imagine that happening? If it was a whole group of, you know, things would just be, wow, the devil doesn't want that. He knows that you're trying to get to higher places. And if there's a whole bunch of us up in high places, 
and he, he gets kind of nervous. So he's going to try to trip you up on the way up. He's going to try to, you know, knock you down a couple of steps to keep you from getting to the, that high place that you're trying to go to. Whether it's on your job, whether it's in your family, you know, trying to go high places in your family, trying to bring your family together. Peace in your family, love in your family. That was going to try to bring you some things to just to pull you apart. That doesn't want the family unit to be together. No, because that's what God wants. He wants the, the unit to be together. Huh. He's going to try to trip you up. He, he's going to throw things. He's going to make things look so appealing. He's going to even make things look ugly. That you don't even want to be bothered with. I don't want to be bothered with my child. I, I, I can't stand him. I need to get out of my, get, just get out of my view. That, the devil wants that. He wants to destroy any good thing. Don't fall for it. Don't allow him that privilege. Don't allow him that privilege. That's all I can say. <laughs> he knows you're trying to get to higher places. And he's going to come at you. Be prepared. Equip yourself with the word. Get really involved with God, like really involved with him so that he can equip you, so that he can, can give you everything, provide you with every bit of strength that you need to endure. Yeah, we're going to endure temptation, but we got to get, be strong doing it so we don't fall to, the, you know, to everything that the devil throws our way. We're almost done here. I just have to Jesus' victory over Satan proves that he is the righteous son of God. Mighty to save all who call upon him. You got, you got to seek him. If we trust in him and walk in his strength each day, we can overcome temptation when it hits. And ladies, guess what? Temptation is going to hit. Get yourself ready. Get yourselves equipped. So that we can endure this thing. These are my last scriptures I have for you as we're closing. I just want you to write these down in your journal. Because these are some scriptures that you really, really, really need to get inside of your heart. Um, one of the lessons that I do with the, the kids is the little tool, toolbox. And inside the toolbox are, are scriptures, empowering um, scriptures, scriptures that can build them up, that they can say. Make yourself a toolbox, a jewelry box, any kind of box. So you can go to that box when you feel yourself, you know, feel like you're losing the fight, losing the battle, right? Feel like it's about to really take you down. <laughs> Pull out some scriptures. Write down Matthew 6 and 13. Matthew 6 and 13. These are just some, some things you can just call out, just say out, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Sometimes you just, and sometimes they're just quick, simple, small scriptures that you just need to say. The enemy, okay, take two steps back. Matthew 6 and 13. Matthew 26 and 41. Matthew 26 and 41. Watch and pray that ye may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Don't give in. Luke 4 and 13. Luke 4 and 13. And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. Know that he's coming, but equip yourself. Luke 11 and 4. And forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation. And, you know, and a lot of times we don't think of, I mean, temptation can be anything. You spend the money that you're not supposed to be spending. <laughs> you know, it, 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 can, it can lead into the eating things you're not supposed to be eating. You know, it, 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 not in your gut. That those things are not in your God plan. You know what's in your God plan, and and and, and you're going against the will of God. Get, yeah, God, temptation. Temptation is not. It's not. 
you know, I'm gonna say either it's not a sin. The act, the, the temptation that you're allowed to set and fester, that's what where the sin it it, be, it brings about sin. Right? Do things you know that are not in your God plan. They're not in the will of God. They're not of God. Anything that destroys you or destroys your body or places you in a place of, of destruction, it's not of God. First uh, Corinthians 7 and 2. First Corinthians 7 and 2. Just jot these down. First Corinthians 10 and 13. That we've already read a couple of times. First Timothy 6 and 9. First Timothy 6 and 9. There are many, many, many more scriptures that you can sit and, and actually quote, meditate on when temptation comes your way. These scriptures, scripture will build you up, will bring you strength. It's God's word. So meditate on scripture. Get, you know, yes, begin to put scripture in your heart. We've been talking about this for the last few weeks, how the word of God, we need the word of God. And if we plan to go to higher places and, and do it and, and get there gracefully, <laughs> we have to equip ourselves with the word of God. The word of God is what's going to lead us and direct us. The word of God is going to give us insight. The word of God is going to give us power. It's going to give us strength. The word of God is going to keep us from falling. The word of God is going, you know, to make us strong. It's going to open our eyes. It's going to help us to focus. The word of God does all of that. It's going to keep us away from dangerous things. So we need the word of God. We have to have it. Ladies, I hope something has been said today that will encourage you as you are getting prepared to fight temptation as you are going through right now with whatever issue that you have fighting temptation. I hope something has been said that will help you along the way. That will encourage you to seek God more. <laughs> Don't do it alone. Don't do this. Don't run this race by yourself. Go to the one that knows it all. Seek Christ. Seek God first and let him lead and guide you in every, in every endeavor that you do. I hope that you um, share these coffee breaks with another sister. You never know what your sister may be going through and you never know how some, this may encourage her just a bit. Maybe a scripture that is said. Maybe something that is said, you know, that we discuss. Maybe it will encourage her just to hold on a little bit longer. Don't give up. That's our goal here. We don't, we just don't want to give up. God can bring us through whatever we're going through. He is the one that we need to seek. And he's, and we just have to tell our minds, go to God, seek God first. If these also have been a blessing to you, I ask that you make a donation, contribute to um, coffee break with Pray Center. Those of you that are here with me, the envelope's here for you. And those of you that are on, on Ustream, um, you can go back to the website and you can click on the Givelify button. Um, you can give from your phone, your app on your phone, Givelify. Just make sure you put in Pray Center uh, and Dumfries. Okay? Make sure it gets to the right location. And you can put the note in there. It's for coffee break. I appreciate you. I appreciate everyone that has um, taken the time, the opportunity to get to me, to email me, to do, you know, contact me and let me know um, that they're, they're tuning in and it, it makes me feel good to know that something has been, is being said and done that um, encourages you to go a little further in God. God bless you and God keep you on this day.